Hello and welcome to a new series of Practical Motorhome TV, your one-stop shop for buying, owning and getting the most from your motor caravan. Now in this series, as always, we offer site reviews, technical advice and new van reviews. So without further ado, in this episode we look at a new van conversion from Swift, Diamond Dave tells you everything you needed to know about tyres, I look at a four-birth dealer special and we indulge our inner druid with a visit to Stone Henge Touring Park. Last year, the Autocruise Select range of panel van conversions was completely relaunched. There was a very temptingly cheap base model and then four fiendishly complicated packs that you could add to make the van as luxurious as you wanted. However, that base model was, well, a bit too basic and the packs a bit too complicated. So for 2018, it's been completely revamped again. The most obvious change is that you will not find an Autocruise badge on this van. That's because 10 years after it bought the brand, Swift has dropped the name as part of a rebranding process that makes all of its vans Swifts. So this is the Swift Select 122. As well as those other changes, we've now got a new base model colour. It's called Iron Grey and it's really rather fetching particularly when set off by those orange decals. They look great, as indeed do these new alloy wheels, which are part of the optional packs. And this van is loaded with an awful lot of options, but it is the entry level 122. It's a van designed for couples. In fact, it's a van designed for particularly sociable couples. If you'd like to come round to the back of the van, I'll show you why, because it has one really rather special feature. If I open up these two doors, you'll see just about the most sociable lounge you'll find in a panel van conversion. It is enormous. I reckon you could just about cram eight people into here. That means that at night you can use these bunks as singles, which is great if you're not feeling particularly sociable with your partner. If you are, you just pull out the frames underneath and it turns into a rather large double bed. As well as making up a big bed, it means big storage in here and it's great to see you can access it both from a drop down flap underneath and from these two hatches in the ends of the sofas. Fantastic. There's also six overhead lockers in here and while we're up there you can see there's a couple of speakers. Now they are standard fit in the 2018 Select having previously been part of one of the options packs as were would you believe fresh and waste water tanks and rear windows in both of the rear doors. Of course, we'd be kidding ourselves if we said that this van doesn't have any options fitted. It has rather a lot of them, including this rather snazzy Swift Shield upholstery. It also has both of the options packs available on the Select. And if you'll excuse me a sec, I shall just get my crib sheet in order to tell you what that means. It has a driver's pack, which means 130 horsepower diesel engine instead of the standard 115, plus cab aircon, cruise control, captain's chairs, passenger and driver airbags, height adjustable seats, body coloured bumpers and black cab trims. It also has the Lux pack which is available only if you've already spec'd the driver's pack which brings those rather fine alloy wheels, DAB radio with Bluetooth, a silver techno dash kit, whatever that is, habitation carpets, pleated blinds in the cab, a TV aerial and a dedicated TV bracket, a 40 watt solar panel and regulator and reversing sensors which are always very useful to have in a motorhome. Now of course as this is the only living area this is where you'll also be doing your dining and your drinking. To do so you're going to need a table. Well luckily I have a solution. With this pole which drops into the floor and this top which drops onto the pole we have a little drinks table, just enough room for a couple of drinks and some all important snacks. If however you need a bit more than just a bowl of crisps, well we just take off the top and swap that lid for this one, which does mean a fairly long cantilever. I'm not sure you'd want to put too much weight on this end of the table. It also means if there's more than four of you in here it's going to be a bit of a stretch but it's a pretty decent size, certainly for a couple, and after all, this is a couple's van. Not that both of you are likely to fit in the offside washroom anytime soon, because it's really much more of a wet room. 
But there's everything you could need with an electric flush loo, a mirrored bathroom cabinet, a shower curtain and an orbit shower head. There's even a drop down sink to make the most of the space available. Inevitably, with a bathroom on the off side, the kitchen here on the near side is going to be a little bit squeezed, as is the corridor between them. But in fact, the kitchen does pack in an awful lot. Instead of last year's tiny two ring hob in unit with a sink, there's a proper three burner hob and a combined oven and grill beneath it. And the sink itself is really quite large. With both lids up, you don't get much in the way of food prep space, but you can always drop them. And at the end here, there's a lift up worktop flat above a decent sized bin. Over here on the off side, there's another spec upgrade with a proper fridge in place of last year's rather tiny Waco item. And above it, well, there's even space to fit in a wardrobe, which is where you'll put the leg and the coffee table bit of your rear table when they're not in use. The main table, well, that goes up here above the cab. Talking of the cab, it's pretty much standard Ducato fare in here. Not that that's a bad thing. They're great to drive and it's pretty roomy for two and nice and bright. And I found out what those silver things in the spec document were. They're these rather fetching little surrounds for the air vents on either side of the stereo. I'm also pleased to see there's not one, but two USB points in here, as well as a 12 volt point. Inevitably, with all of that extra spec, prices for the Select have gone up for 2018. But to my mind, the range works much better with a much more generous level of standard equipment for the base model. As indeed do those option packs. They're still really tempting, but they're no longer absolutely crucial. As for the layout, well, for a couple who don't need any additional travel seats, it works really rather well. It's a spacious and versatile way for two people to tour in comfort. Hello there, welcome to another episode of Diamond Dave's Workshop. Tyres, we've looked at tyres once before, but it's worth reinforcing what we're talking about. This tyre on the surface looks perfectly good, plenty of tread depth, good condition, no sidewall cracking, but if we turn it round, it's a different story. We've got a huge lump of tread has gone out of it here. Now this tyre came off a motorhome that a customer had driven 70 miles to us with that missing. You'd have thought he might have noticed some vibration, but it's not always the case. Very, very lucky that the tire didn't actually burst, explode, blow out, call it what you like. It would have been a very dramatic event. This is a 16 inch tire, 215 millimeters in width, inflated to 80 PSI. That's a huge amount of energy when it's doing 60 miles an hour. If that had gone bang, I guarantee it would have done a lot of damage to the bodywork of the motorhome could have even caused a rollover. So it's very important to pay attention to the tires. You can see the chunk of tread that's missing here. You can see it right down to the cords. The tread is delaminated completely from the carcass of the tire and it's cracked deep in the tread all the way down here. That's separated from the inner carcass. How this tire survived a 70 mile journey, I'll never know, but it did. Basically, the real problem with this tire is its age. All tires have a date stamp on them. Here it is, if I just illuminate it, you can see it clearer. 2111. That means this tyre was made in week 21 of 2011. It's a six year old tyre. Age and standing around for long periods is what causes most of the problems with tyres. This vehicle was probably sat for several weeks, maybe even months in one place. This is probably the area of tyre that was on the ground. All of the weight on that corner of the vehicle will be sitting on that area. Once this delamination process has started, and then you start driving, the heat build up in the tyre through friction while you're driving will aggravate this breakdown and it will go very quickly. So when you're inspecting your tyres, don't just look at the bits you can see, have a look into the gaps of the tread. You're looking for cracks, any signs of breakdown, look at the side walls for breakdown, check that date code, and if it's more than six years old, I strongly recommend you consider replacing the tyres. Because if that happens to you on the motorway at 60 miles an hour, maybe in France on your way to a holiday or during a holiday, you're gonna have problems because you've got damage to the vehicle and you've got to find a new tyre and it just takes the edge off the holiday really. So check your tyres, check them closely and check your tyre pressures. 
See you all next time. Glorious weather like this can only mean one thing. Yes, it's great British summertime, and that's when we start turning our attentions to what's coming for the new model year. So for 2018 then, Eldis's portfolio topping range Encore goes forward with the same four models. But there have been a raft of improvements, starting on the outside, as last season's silver sidewalls give way to this new champagne color. And very fetching it is too. And before we head inside to get out of all this amazing weather, let me just tell you that the wheels have changed for this year if you take the optional extra of having a smart new set of alloys. So without any further ado, let's dive inside and see what else has changed in Encore for 2018. So here we are in the Encore 254, and this is a four berth with a rear island bed and a parallel lounge up front. There's plenty of natural daylight able to get into this space from two side windows, a roof light above the cab, and actually above the lounge. Four spotlights are on standby for the evenings, and there's overlocker ambient lighting, so all very good all round. Now the seating is in fact an optional extra. For £1,550 at 2017's prices, you can have this leather on which also includes the cab seats. Now this is a four berth and it also has four travel seats, but where are they? Because there's no familiar dinette situation going on here. Well, simple, Eldis is continuing with its little innovation of having the travel seats in the seat boxes. And the other advantage of this kind of seat is that it's not as bolt upright as most dinette seating, so it should be pretty comfortable on tour. Now, the near side kitchen is compact, but once again, it has all the essentials, starting with a microwave, a hob with one electric hot plate and three gas burners, and that's on top of a separate oven and grill. Next to that, you'll find a large circular sink with a smart mixer tap. All very good. And down here are three drawers with a soft closing action. Now, another interesting feature of the kitchen is the surround around the sink. There's a very pleasing shape going on here. So good thinking on the design front, it certainly makes things look a little bit more ergonomic and aesthetic. Down here, there's storage for the lounge table. That just pulls out, and it's very easy to do. And just like the drawers, it's soft closing. And the kitchen's overhead lockers haven't missed out on the soft closing action either. Look at all that racking inside, but when you've finished using it, you just let it go for another soft closing action. And the kitchen storage array is completed by this dual fuel fridge, which I'm pleased to report is of the on-trend skinny variety. Now, in case you're wondering where the worktop is, because there isn't actually masses on display, there's actually a flap just over here. Now, it's not at the same height as the kitchen, but I assume the two things are related, because obviously it certainly adds to the real estate in the kitchen. And you can shut everything out with this pleated cassette blind. And that's in addition to a leather effect window surround. There's another one over here. And here in the corner, there's a vanity unit with storage up above and below. And Eldis has handily included a plug point on there, two USB sockets, and all the connections for your TV. So in addition to using it as a makeup or hair drying station, you can also have an evening cinema. And bookending the bed, you'll find a matching pair of wardrobes. And just like everything in the 2018 Encore range that has side-mounted hinges, the action is soft closing. And just underneath that, another good innovation, a little tray that you can pull out to rest your phone or specs on in the nighttime. Now, the other advantage to having an island bed model, of course, is the fact that there's a massive storage space under the bed, easily accessible on a gas strut. And you can also load items from outside the van thanks to this handy hatch. Now, most of this space is available. A little bit is taken by the Aldi wet central heating system next to it. But outside the kitchen, there are six overhead lockers. So all in all, plenty of places to distribute your payload for this van, which for last year was just under 450 kilograms. Now, the offside washroom in the 254 is a space saving arrangement, so the loo floor is in fact a shower tray. And speaking about the shower, you get an Eco Camel Orbit shower head for a very efficient spray because it mixes air and water together. Elsewhere, you get a bang on trend circular sink, a smart mixer tap, and a half length mirror. 
Now the Encore range is based on the Peugeot Boxer with a 2 litre engine producing 130 bhp and they're bang up to date Euro 6 units so they meet all the latest emission standards. Now the cab spec gets you DAB radio, smartphone connectivity via USB and Bluetooth plus steering wheel mounted controls and that's in addition to cab aircon and cruise control. Another great feature is the addition of a couple of cup holders at the bottom just under where you plug in for your USB. The oldest Encore 254 has an MTPLM of 3,500 kilograms, so anyone can drive it on a standard car license. It's 7.4 meters long, so best check if you can fit it on your driveway. Now, changes to Encore for 2018 are evolutionary rather than revolutionary, but there's still plenty to pique your interest in the range and in this particular model. So if you're after the comfort and convenience of an island bed tourer with the added flexibility of two belts and two berths up front, then this fan is a good place to start your search. All in all, this fan is a very capable performer, especially when you consider it's likely to be priced around the £50,000 mark. And I think that is absolutely marvellous value for money. small site that is Stonehenge Touring Park is an out-and-out back-to-basics affair. If you like your camping with few frills but plenty of nature, then this could be your ideal spot. It's the atmosphere. The atmosphere of this site is incredible. Now I'm not saying that because we run it, I'm saying it because there is nothing better of a morning than walking out here to a site full of people all having a great time. Set in the stunning Wiltshire countryside, Stonehenge Touring Park is on the edge of Salisbury Plain and just minutes away from hundreds of beautiful country walks and hours of high quality rambling. We selected this campsite because it's uh, a somewhat smaller campsite, uh, yet a nice location uh, in the green, in the fields. Uh, yeah, that's, that's why we like it. It's a, it's a nice site, as you can see around here. It's like, you know, nice trees in it. It's a nice, friendly site. The owners are always welcoming, they're always happy to see you. We don't like the big camping sites, we like more the sites like this, small sites where you uh, can do anything easy and which are more beautiful than the big ones where everything is ruled. We don't like rules. <laughs> and that relaxed atmosphere is just one reason why it's been a regular in our top 100 sites for the last six years. Our readers praise the site for being well laid out, for its spotless facilities and the friendly and helpful staff. Stonehenge Touring Park caters for just 30 touring vehicles and has a mixture of hard and soft standing pitches, all of which have access to electricity and water points. There's a drive over facility for motorhome grey waste disposal and an L sand point tucked away behind the toilet block. The toilet block itself is basic but clean. At the time of filming, there were no disabled facilities, although the owner has confirmed these are in place now. Doubling up as the village store, the on-site shop sells everything from wine to greetings cards. And it's also where you'll find the basics for any touring trip, from gas bottle refills, to tent pegs and mallets, and power cables. And you don't have to be stuck on Stonehenge Touring Park if you don't want to be, as public transport is a five-minute stroll from the site. Buses run to Salisbury and Devizes, and from there you can travel to the whole of Wiltshire and beyond. Stonehenge is just a short drive away, as is Cranbourne Chase, an area of outstanding natural beauty, plus the medieval town of Trowbridge. Nice, showers nice and clean, toilets always clean, showers always hot. This is just a nice friendly site. I would definitely recommend the site. Um, you just have to take into account that there's, if, if you're looking for contacts longer than, than a couple of days, uh, this might not be the ideal site because people tend to pop in and out just for a short visit to Stonehenge, so you have less visitors for a longer stay, but we kind of like it because you have short contacts, more contacts with people, uh, so we kind of like that. 
And if you like the idea of a small, friendly, back to basics campsite, then Stonehenge Touring Park could be just what you're looking for. Sadly, that's all we've got time for on this week's show. We'll be back soon with a look at some fantastic new motorhomes, including the rebooted Sun Living. Plus, Diamond Dave will be telling you everything you need to know about getting your own toolkit together. Until next time then, you can keep in touch via our website, Facebook or Twitter. In the meantime, tour safe and take care.